Okay, let me introduce the next big problem that occurs in these horses, especially with diaphragm problems, and that is stomach spasms. And so what you'll find is as the diaphragm goes into spasm, the entire diaphragm goes into spasm. So especially any entry and exit places in the diaphragm will create problems and, and go into spasms. So, one of the big ones is the esophagus runs right through in the center, but anyway, at this level, right through there, and it is, diaphragm is torsioning that, that esophagus. I'll turn her this way. Diaphragm torsions that esophagus right at where the stomach is. The stomach sits on, more on the left, but it sits about right here. So if the diaphragm torsions there and the vagus nerve that is responsible for acidification and regulation of the stomach is torsioned, it automatically creates a problem with the stomach. So from my perspective, after doing, oh, I don't know, maybe a thousand horses with diaphragm problems or more, at least probably 2,000, the primary cause of stomach ulcers, all stomach ulcers, is a diaphragm spasm. And it's due to the esophagus being impinged right there. And the reason I say that is because horses that have been on Gastrogard and other pharmaceutical and other treatments resolve with this diaphragm clearing and no longer need the medication. And I have many that have been in spasm for years and years and years. These particular injuries, diaphragm spasms, don't heal on their own. They need our intervention. That's why they're that critical. So, let's assess that. How do you know you have a stomach problem? Well, the Chinese point, the association point on the bladder meridian, on that keyboard, is at the last rib, the 18th rib. So the way you find that, here's the curve of the ribs. Follow it up. Curve of the ribs. Flinch it. That's a reactive stomach. That's reactive. That's not. Both sides, really reactive on the right. Let me do that again. Reactive stomach point, really reactive on the right. So now she's guarding. The osteopaths, I like to use multiple tests, so I'll use an osteopathic test. The stomach sits here, so anywhere around the stomach will put tissue in spasm. So if you just flinch that, like if I flinch here like we did earlier, fine. If I flinch over the stomach, that's a really reactive stomach. I can almost tell how reactive and how much inflammation is in that stomach and probably ulcers in that stomach via how much it flinches. Let me show you that again quite a bit. You can see the whole body reacts from that. So one more time. 18th rib all the way up, about an inch off the spine. Flinch, that's reactive. Flinch the right side, more so. When it's more reactive on the right, that usually means the right side of the organ is in deeper spasm. Over the stomach area, pretty close. Flinch, very reactive as opposed to on the liver here. So the next thing I want to show you is T12, which sits right there. If you want to find T12, find that 18th rib. Count in 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Follow it up, there's T12. T12 is always pulled down with a stomach spasm so that the body, if I could show you on my body, it feels like this constantly. They can try to lift around it, but they can't fully extend and they're heavy on the forehand just with stomach. So I'm going to come in and try to belly lift her and then ask this to lift. And I'm really coming through. You'll notice it'll lift here and stop. And I'm really pushing dorsally here and then it will take off again because the stomach is basically pulling everything down. So I'm going to go into this primarily with osteopathic technique. Okay, let's turn her this way so you can see it. So at this level at T12, about this far down, slightly off the center, is that esophagus. So I'm going to go into that osteopathically and you can see as soon as I put my intention there, she moves. So I use the heart again on this. And she's going to move because I'm, I'm not quite down there yet. So I'm taking an elevator ride with my intention and my hand. And as soon as I hit that point right there, I feel it push back on me. So it's energy and then it's physical right away. So it, it feels very real. So here we go, Basket. 
I'm going to ask her to move a little forward, and this is obviously extremely painful. The entire core of her body is being torsioned and twisted here. So here we go. There was one little release right there. She's not too happy with it yet because there's more. If it releases suddenly all at once, the horse almost goes to the ground or will go to the ground. So I'm going back in again. I'm on the outside there. I mean, you can tell when I'm in there. Now I'm going to give a nudge. Grab the heart. There's a little release. Grab the heart. Another one. Hold on. I'm going to grab a nerve that goes there. There was another one. So that nerve literally runs right in there and gets impinged. So here we go. Still not done. So I'm going to flow with her a little bit more gently. This is no way to do this without some gradual pain. There we go. So I'm merging with her frequency. It's kind of rocking up and down. And now I'm going to hold it. And I have a hold of the tissue engaged. And I'm going to just keep her moving. And Busket, here it comes. Right, right on the verge of releasing. There it went. That was the final release. It's difficult to explain sometimes, but it's almost like a ball can bounce along on a rubber band and suddenly it centers and falls on solid ground. That's what that feels like. So that should be the stomach. Now, it will release T12 so it can be adjusted now. So what I'll do is do that adjustment now. So T12 needs to go, not my way, but your way. It needs to go to the right. Side bend right, rotation right, <laughs> it's in flexion, and I'll nudge it. There it went. Okay, we're ready. There you go. So, let's take a look at the effects of releasing that esophageal hiatus way down there. And this mare had a much more prominent one than normal. So, let's reassess. Bladder meridian 18 rib up. No flinch. What's the organ doing? I'm not getting anything there, and I'm really trying to find a little weakness. Nothing. And then let me turn her slightly this way so you can see if we get a difference in the spinal reach flexing up. That is a magnificent difference. Let me do that again in the flexion that has been let go, and that diaphragm comes up. Often you'll find as you release stomach, the whole Spine, for lack of a better word, will inflate there. So as you can see, the diaphragm creates a tremendous stomach problem, which leads to all kinds of other gastrointestinal problems and mechanical problems. So just to wrap up this stomach ulcer problem, this stomach spasm problem, it is a result, probably 95% of the time, of a diaphragm spasm, spasming the esophagus and the vagus nerve here. And it will always cause problems on the forehand. So, what I'd like you to remember is, to assess this, find that 18th rib. It's very difficult to find the rib here. It's much easier to find it out here. Follow it up. Flinch that on the bladder meridian before it was reactive. Now it isn't. Then the stomach sits right about there. Flinch that. If you get a reaction to either one of those places, you should get both. You have a reactive stomach. The third thing, as you come under with belly lifts, they should not be able to lift here because that stomach is in holding them down. In this case, we have a nice smooth lift through there now. When you have a reactive stomach association point, a reactive organ around the organ, tissue around the organ, and no lift there, you can rest assured that you have a stomach problem, probably an ulcer in that area. If I wanted to give you one thing that you could do yourself since this is a very advanced problem that's difficult to get with acupressure and that would be find T12 18th rib 17 16 15 14 13 12 follow it up on either side is the diaphragm association point it happens to be right there put two fingers there put your energy into there no matter what then find stomach one the lower portion of the eye right on the bone right there and now merge both of these points, left and right hand. 
And many times you can affect this diaphragm and the stomach there. There, we had even more come out there. So these are some things to keep in mind, things to try yourself. If nothing else, assess that you have the problem. Try those acupoints and see what you can do.